Milwaukee PD are also investigating the death of a 29-year-old man whose body was found in the Menominee River. Authorities were called to the scene near 42nd and Mount Vernon just before 12.30 this afternoon. An autopsy is scheduled for Monday. I know uh, as a people, as a family, we've all been through a lot over the past year dealing with new adjustments and everything and, you know, the way life goes. There's some, there's a verse in the Bible, I'm not going to quote it, I didn't plan this. It's a time for everything. There's a time to plant, there's a time to reap, there's a time to mourn, there's a time to laugh. There's a time to embrace and there's a time to let go. In these seasons of life are not promised, but we are taught to embrace them. And this is the start of a new beginning. And I have no doubt you in good hands. <laughs> Yo, youngin, my cousin ain't lied to me once. <laughs> Everything from bacon being carcinogenic to people, all a bunch of different stuff, he ain't lied. But I'm just take this moment out to just say I'm uh, proud of y'all, and I know he's gonna be a strong leader one day when he grows up. Nobody's gonna tell him nothing. So I love y'all, and I'm glad to be here with all y'all today to Thank share this. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, I'm here to uh, talk about a very very serious subject. The subject is about. Uh, my first cousin, my first cousin, uh, Marcus Wenzo, and uh, this is going to be information for, uh, this is all public information, information that's on basically public on Facebook, public on the CCAP, um, public information on the CCAP court system uh, in Wisconsin. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to be going through a lot of different information. This might take a while, actually. So let's hope the uh, stream shouldn't be uh, interrupted too much. But, you know, I have a new, faster internet now. So hopefully the stream should be working all right. All right. So, you know, the algorithm get into too heavy stuff, like, too early on. So I'm just going to give some details. Uh, I'm just going to give some details. Um, Marcus Wanzo Jr. Uh, was a decorated soldier, and he was found in the uh, Menominee River in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on November 20th. Uh, he served in Afghanistan, um, and he was trained in marshes and rivers. He was trained in tactical uh, warfare, he was a soldier, right? And he was found in the Menominee River uh, in a very shallow part of the river. You know, it was probably about, probably just a couple of feet. Very, very shallow part of the river. And he was also a great swimmer. And um, he, his uh, jacket was found to be torn, right? And he had uh, lacerations on his hands. And we're going to be going through all the information today um, as far as uh, the information that's out there, as far as the press. Uh, when it initially happened on the 20th, three different news agencies covered the story, Fox, TMJ, and uh, I believe CBS were the three stations in Milwaukee that covered it. So we're going to be starting with those, and I'm going to be reading through these things. Um, so this is going to be a uh, very long, uh, drawn-out process of just going and gathering all the public information. And this is, you know, for uh, the families and uh, everybody that's uh, seeking information about this press, Fox News. Uh, so um, I've been helping my family organize the information because we are uh, getting a private investigator because the uh, detectives that are involved in the case uh, are basically not trying to do anything about it 
Um, they're writing Marcus off as just some guy who accidentally fell in the river and, and drowned in just a couple of feet of water. Even though he was trained in Afghanistan as, you know, a soldier that could be underwater for like 45 minutes. They did underwater training, uh, you know, with tactical gear and stuff and, and breathing with tubes and stuff like that underwater. Um, and yeah, so he was found fully clothed and he was found uh, by four guys. You know, we're going to go into all, all the details of all these things, but um, three of the guys were actually felons with very, very heinous criminal records. All right, so, um, you know, so there, it's clearly that um, foul play, most likely. You know, this is all alleged. But, um, you know, you know, a, a bunch of press has already covered this, but nobody's saying his name. Nobody's saying Marcus Wenzo Jr. The press are just saying 20-year-old man. And this was two days after the Rittenhouse verdict. And this was a day before the uh, the massacre that happened in Kenosha with the guy driving through the people in the parade. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, you know you know in, in the Wisconsin press and the Milwaukee area, there's a lot of you know uh, tension going on along color lines, right? And, you know, they're not reporting that this was uh, the son of Reverend Willie Wanzo Sr., uh, pastor of Metropolitan Baptist Church in Milwaukee, a pillar of the community. This was uh, his grandson, who he, whom he raised as a son in his household. Um, and, you know, he has a street named after him, literally. And the press isn't covering this story, and they're just kind of keeping his name blank. You know, um, our family, we've reached out to a lot of different people and organizations, and, you know, the news has gotten back, Fox News has gotten back. Um, luckily, one of Marcus Wenzel's high school coaches uh, is, you know, currently working at Fox News in Milwaukee. So, you know, that really is helping things out, you know, obviously, as far as spreading the word to uh, about what, you know, um, could have possibly happened, you know, we're everything is still being investigated. See, this is October 17th, so that's not the right one. That was a month before, you know, and some people said this, this could even be a thing where it's um, like a, a serial type of a thing, because... You know, if you if um, if you take a, a step back and go to the history of Milwaukee, you know you've got Dahmers, you've got Ed Geins, you know, um, and you know like the whole Silence of the Lambs thing. You know that that's you know part of the uh, like Germanic German uh, you know history of Milwaukee, right? Um, so you know within this case. Within this case, there's a lot of shocking things that our family found. Uh, you know, the four guys that. Let's see. Let's let's just start with the the case. This is on November twentieth, so the one before was on October seventeenth. The one before it was on October seventeenth, but this is November twentieth. This is when it happened. All right, so I'm going to click on body pull. I'm going to click on the CBS fifty eight article. It says body pull from Menominee River medical examiner call. All right, it says, um, so we're going to read this. It says, body pulled from the Menominee River. Medical examiner called to the scene. Milwaukee CBS 58. Milwaukee police are investigating a death that occurred Saturday, November 20th, near 42nd in Mount Vernon. Authorities say that at approximately 12.23 p.m. Saturday, a body was recovered from the Menominee River. Police report that the Decedent was identified as a 29-year-old Milwaukee man. Officials state that the cause of death is under investigation. No additional information on this case is available at this time. But the information was available because Marcus had his wallet on him with two IDs with his actual address on it and his name. So they knew his name. They didn't. They weren't divulging anything to the public, and maybe that's the thing that the detectives were doing. But the detectives are saying they're ruling it just an accident, 
even though he was trained in the water, you know, and I, you know, I'll show you all the pictures of, you know, of, uh, you know, the, the things that, uh, the people that found or recovered his body or possibly are the ones who did it. We don't know who did it, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of suspicious people with a lot of criminal records that are all kind of surrounding this, this case. And we're going to be going through Wisconsin's CCAP and, and going over the criminal records and, and things like that. But yes, this is all alleged, obviously, but, you know, it seems like it could have been foul play because his his jacket was torn on the right arm. We'll be showing the jacket. Actually, you know what? I can just show the jacket right now. I'm going to start just showing things real time, make things move faster. I don't want to be here all day. I don't want to keep you all here all day, but this is going to be very, very long. So this is the jacket. We're gonna see that we're gonna flip to the jacket really quick. Oh, I guess I gotta push enter. So we're flipping on the we're flipping to the jacket. So yeah, this is Marcus's jacket that was just recovered a couple of days ago by his aunt Kathy. Um, his aunt Kathy is, is is the one who raised him after Reverend Wanzo passed away. And when I'm ta speaking of Reverend Wanzo, this is Reverend Wanzo right here. When I'm speaking of Reverend Wenzel, this is Reverend Wenzel right here. Let me put this picture in. This is Reverend Wenzel, uh, rest in peace, who, uh, you know, raised Marcus. And uh, this is his Marcus's grandfather. And he has a street named after him in Burleigh. And, you know, Pastor Wenzel, um, you know, uh, people like, you know, Oprah Winfrey's church, you know, she went to Sunday school there. And her mother, Oprah Winfrey's mother, continued to go to Pastor Wenzel's church up until she passed away quite recently. Um, and, you know, so, you know, his grandson that he raised as a son being found dead in the middle of the a very serious thing for the Milwaukee community, and it's not being reported on the news. It's not being reported on the news who he was. You know, and uh, the fact, and the fact, it, the news is also not reporting the fact that, you know, Reverend Wenzel's son was found behind the Brewer Stadium. So he was found, and we'll go into the logistics of all that. So I'm going to go to Brewer Stadium. Uh, Brewers Stadium, Milwaukee. So, you know, it's very, very suspicious what happens, you know, surrounding Marcus uh, Wenzel's uh, untimely death. And just so, for the record, you know, he is first cousin. Uh, let me see. Brewers Stadium. Milwaukee map. I'm just going to type map. Map. All right, you know what? I'm just going to type uh, Trinity Park, Milwaukee. Trinity Park, Milwaukee map. Okay, there we go. It'll be easier this way. So, I'm gonna zoom into Milwaukee. So we're zooming into Milwaukee. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you where uh, he was found. So this is the Menominee River. All right. It wasn't that far from Potawatomi Bingo. Here we go. Potawatomi Hotel Casino. And then a little bit farther up, the river right here. So at Valley Park, this is where Marcus was found, right here. Marcus was found right about here where I'm pointing. I don't know if you can see my pointer. Yeah, I guess you can see my pointer. Marcus was found right about here in the Menominee River. And it was really, this is a, a, a section that's like a, a flood basin type of thing that's like, you know, goes from like one foot to three feet, like really, really, sh you know, shallow river 
section and then it gets fast again down here um, he was in that section and it looks like you know he was pushed in that section you know because if he had, if he you know um, they didn't rule it a suicide they didn't there's no like big bruises or anything broken you know like not you know people say oh if he were to jump off the side and that's where detective uh, uh, Slumchesky suggested to Melissa and um, Melissa was uh, um, an ex-girlfriend of Marcus a long-term girlfriend and you know they treated her uh, you know very poorly you know the detectives have been uh, you know very very uh, um, negligent in the matter um, they're they're not they're investigating anything and they literally told our family that um, you know that it, it had to have been an accident you know which is the preliminary uh, medical examiner um, thing that somebody wrote down they wrote down accident and this was remember the written house after uh, the written house verdict um, and one day before the, you know, the massacre in Milwaukee or in, you know, in Kenosha. So, you know, this is, so yeah, so this is a very, very serious thing. Um, so yeah, so we're, so Valley Park, um, is the sheriff's jurisdiction. So Valley Park is the sheriff's jurisdiction, and um, you know, were called. I guess they were. It was called for the river, but this is the actual parking lot of the Brewers. This is Matthews Field. It says Matthews Field Preferred, right here, Matthews Field, and you can see this is uh, behind the Brewer Stadium. So, you know, we've got Reverend Wunzo here. Let's go back to Reverend Wunzo. We got Reverend Wunzo's uh, grandson, who he raised as a son, found in the back of the parking lot of you know this field. It's like, what's up with that? That's totally kind of crazy, right? So you know, um, we're hiring an investigator as the family, and uh, we're going to be doing a GoFundMe soon, you know, because he's going to have to interview a lot of different people. You know, there's a guy, one of his friends that has one of his cell phones that's not giving it to the family. A guy named Jordan Bosma. You know, the four guys that found him, Robert Allen James. Um, he sent a picture of Marcus's body floating in the, in the Menominee River to my mother via Facebook. And we're going to go to all these people's pages today. You know, and this is all public information. You know, stuff that's publicly out there. We're going to go to everybody's pages and we're going to go to the C caps and do background checks and investigations because this is really serious stuff. This guy. But yeah, this is serious stuff. This guy literally sent a picture of. But yeah, this is serious. This guy literally sent a picture of my first cousin floating the river to my mom. Just randomly. And then, you know, nobody really background checked him. So I, I clicked on his Facebook. And he's got, you know, KKK stuff all over his Facebook. So uh, we're going to so we're gonna go to the guys that discovered him. Um, you know, uh, the detectives felt there's no need to investigate. Um, a KKK flag, which is kind of scary. So, you know, our, our family had to report that, right? It's, it's very, very serious what happened. You know, it could have been a lynching. You know, obviously... It could have been a lynching. We don't know what happened. Uh, if there's pauses, that's because uh, Facebook is uh, hating and, and adding a bunch of uh, live stream breakdowns even though I have like the super fast new internet so but uh, anyway yeah so it's like we know that he didn't jump off the bridge because he didn't have broken limbs nothing was broken right uh, he had lacerations on his hands and his uh, shin and 
This is exactly where he's, uh, where Sean Kunkel, one of the guys that found him, says he was found, right? So we're gonna go to, and this is remember this is the back behind of a parking lot. So he could have, you know, somebody could have, you know, uh, you know, this was like a hangout area right here. There's graffiti, and we'll go into all that in uh, later on. But there's graffiti in this area. There's all types of stuff. It's a hangout. So he could have been hanging out with somebody, and somebody robbed him. And, uh, you know, maybe he was, you know, cop a cheese from somebody, and, and somebody robbed him, and, and uh, you know, threw him there. You know, and there, so we're talking about a, a lot of different uh, possible alleged person of interest. Um, so, you know, first we're going to start out with the four people that uh, found his uh, uh, body. And those these guys are Robert Allen James. Sean Kunkel, um, Lawrence Rhodes, and Clayton Matul. And three of the guys that found him, uh, let's see, three of the guys that found him, they, uh, l let's see, let's, let me go to this, so let's, let's bring this picture in. We're going to bring a picture in right here. All right, so this picture right here, this was sent by, to me by Sean Kunkel, one of the, uh, for people that uh, uh, found uh, my cousin, and they said they found him right here. They said where the purple area is, that's where they said they found him, uh, where I was just showing you in the map, right? And, you know, th that could be the case, you know. Um, but his friends, the three other guys, have really, really extreme criminal records, you know. And, you know, they have a thing that they uploaded to the internet about what happened that day. And, you know, they're talking about a, a lot of crazy stuff in that video. Um, you know, they're making jokes. One of the guys' wives, wife gets on and is like, hey, you guys, sh you know, should take down the video. You know, um... So we're gonna go through um, all this stuff. We're gonna go go through everything. This is uh, gonna be a thorough um, dissemination of information that's publicly available, right? So um, let's look at this. So we, we just looked at that. Now the first guy uh, of the people that found him, my mom, and sent my mom a picture of of Marcus uh, in the river. Um, his name is Robert Allen James. And he has a YouTube page called uh, Bad Influencer. Thing called magnet diving, and magnet diving is where they take a, a giant magnet and they throw the magnet into the river, and you know, and they see what they can get. You know, I guess they burn down stuff. Um, before I get to that, I just want to show the street sign of Reverend uh, Willie. Wong. Just to get some perspective on all this. So this is the street sign of Reverend Willie D. Wanzo Sr. This was Marcus's grandfather. So Marcus was, you know, found in the river, and his grandfather literally has a street named after him, a part of Burleigh. And we don't see any type of, uh, you know, media of what's going on. Because, you know, just calling him an anonymous 29-year-old is, is uh, you know, clearly... Uh, kind of kind of crazy right and um even and let me go to let's see, another piece of information so um right here i'm going to bring in this this is in uh this is captain seamer uh tabasca shannon seamer tabasca she actually just got promoted in and she's not on this case anymore but she was just on this case and she said it's uh, their right to have KKK flags. The people that, uh, one of the guys that found his body, Robert Allen James, has KKK flags and severed bodies, uh, lacerated bodies, stuff from Rotten.com rotten all over his page. And, uh, you know, she uh, said that's cool. It's their freedom of speech. You know, she said it was totally cool. It's freedom of speech. And if, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, racial stuff. That's that's the feds. They don't deal with that. They 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 don't view this as a possible lynching, or you know, they felt no need to investigate uh, three felons t and two of them being sex offenders. 
that found my cousin's body. So of the four guys, my cousin's body, one had a, uh, one didn't have a criminal record, but two of them were sex offenders. One of them were, uh, was a KKK guy. Like he has KKK stuff on all his page. So we're going to go to his page right now. We're going to go to facebook.com. This is what Seymour Tabasco and detective that was, that was under her, uh, Slum Chesky, um, said it was okay. They said it was kosher. Another detective said it was kosher as well. We told them about it, we, that our family was worried because this guy, Robert Allen James, sent my mom uh, um, this. And this is what she said in her department, the MPD at the NY, at the MPD, at the MPD is saying, all right, so before that, I'm going to show a picture of Marcus as a soldier because Marcus, you know, like I was saying before, this is uh, Marcus uh, Wanzo, who was found in the river. You know, he was a soldier. He was trained in the marshes and rivers. And, you know, he was trained in, um, in the U.S. And he was trained in Afghanistan. And he uh, gained numerous medals in, in Afghanistan. And, you know, he was trained in the rivers. You know, so he knew how to uh, survive in rivers. So a three-foot... Um, stream uh you know is clearly you know some something happened to him there's some type of foul play going on and now we're going to go to what the what shannon seamer tabasca who just received a promotion even in the midst of all this uh it said is kosher so her and her department backs this guy robert allen james right here this is robert allen james this is his actual facebook so we're going to go to his actual facebook he sent this picture of, of Marcus Wenzel, my cousin, in the Menominee River, face down. And you see this is really, really shallow river, a uh, section of the river. You know, this is a, sec a shallow section of the river. There's some orange graffiti there. You know, it should still be there. Um, and, you know, this is uh, the guy that sent my this picture. So this picture of him floating the river is was sent by this guy that's on some KKK stuff. You know what I'm saying? He's literally got two different KKK flags on his page. He's got this one that's like that and he's got another one that says W Power and the triple K on the bottom, right? So that so let's let's go back again. Let's see. Let's Oh, whoops. It didn't go through, so let me pull pull that in so you can see the actual picture of what I'm what I'm showing. That opened up in another page that's not visible. Let me reopen that. Cause I mean this is really really serious, and the fact that you know the MPD uh, is supporting it is is uh, kind of scary to us. So. Our family, we had that reported. We talked to the sheriffs, and you know, Ted Chisholm in the sheriff's department was very cool and you know, apologized for the you know, actions of the MPD. Um, so, you know, this is for everybody that's coming in. This is for uh, you know, information out there that, about uh, what happened to Marcus Wanzo. All right, this is all public information, so we're gonna bring this one in let me bring this one in I guess I have to press enter all right boom so this is you know this is all real stuff so this guy in this picture Robert Allen James uh, Robert Allen James sent this picture um, right next to him uh, uh, to my mom you know he sent this picture of Marcus floating face down and you know Marcus is a decorated soldier trained in marshes and rivers this type of distance, you know, he's not just going to accidentally drown in this type of river, right? Um, something happened to him. And, you know, this guy sent the picture to my mom, knowing he had all this KKK stuff on his page. This is his actual Facebook. And we're going to go to his actual Facebook. So let's go to his actual Facebook. And the detectives, like I showed you, Shannon uh, to, uh, Seymour Tabasca, Captain Shannon T Seymour Tabasco, who just got a promotion to a special elite division of the of the Milwaukee Police Force, her and her uh, different detectives, like Solomeski, who's on the case, said that these KKK flags were okay. They said it's totally fine. It's freedom of speech. 
you know, and I'm like, no, it's, it's, you know, it's one thing, the Confederate flag, but to have an actual terrorist group like the KKK and to have like lacerated bodies and stuff. So we're going to go to his actual Facebook. All right. Because, you know, Zuckerberg's, you know, uh, you know, facilitating this type of stuff. And this was his this picture was sent to my mom via Facebook. Uh, this picture of my cousin floating in the river. So uh, I'm going to go to, uh, um, let's see, Facebook, Robert Allen James. So his name is Robert Allen James, born 1983. Uh, and we're going to go to his Facebook. This is his photo section. Go to his photos. All right, so we're going to his photos. We got Willie in the house. And did he just change his photos? Yep, he just took him down again. He just took him down again. All his KKK stuff. Yep, he just took it down. Let's see. Yep. That's wild, but I'm going to click back. So all this stuff was just up earlier today. He just took it down. And he took it down a couple days ago, too. But he had it up for like three days. And uh, that's even more suspicious. He took it down again. He, so he's taken it down twice within the past week. So let me go uh, go forward. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's loading now. It wasn't fully loading before, so he didn't take it down. So boom, there it is. See, Facebook was hiding it. See, look, Facebook, you saw that? Y'all saw that. That's some Zuckerberg al algorithm stuff, but look. So we're gonna go through his photos. This is the guy that sent my mom a picture of my cousin face down the river, right? And you know, my family didn't click on his page, but I'm like, yo, I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna see what's on this guy's page. You know, you see he's done some like, you know, uh, you know, dark stuff, right? It's just like Freddy Gothic stuff or whatever. But you know, he's got dead animals. You know, uh, remember Jeffrey Dahmer's father was a taxidermist. You know, so Jeffrey Dahmer grew up with you know, just having all types of animals around the house, right? So he's got the dead animal stuff right here. He's got his stuff right here, but he's got literal KKK flags. Look. He's got literal KKK flags on his Facebook, and the police said, the, the detective said there's no need, uh, de that's Detective Slomcheski, uh, Detective, you know, Captain Seymour Tabasco, who's just got promoted to another position, uh, who's been dealing with this case, uh, you know, she said this is okay. She said, uh, you know, this is a nice young, you know, snot-nosed American boy, you know, this is okay, freedom of speech. And they said if you want, uh, you know, something to happen you probably should be talking to the feds and you know i spoke with ted chisholm at the fair uh the the at the sheriff's department in milwaukee uh you know the sheriff's i believe uh, the the sheriff's wife uh went to school with my uncle i believe or maybe my aunt but uh you know uh ted chisholm was very apologetic about the MPD's behavior, um, and you know, we're hoping a you know maybe a, a new docket could get filed with you know within the uh, the Valley Park uh, Sheriff's jurisdiction. Uh, but uh, he was you know very apologetic about that, and uh, you know said he he might be forwarding some paperwork to the uh, Fed uh, liaison at the MPD. Who knows if he did it? I I have with with uh, Ted Chisholm but uh yeah so so yeah all this stuff is up here now you see you know the fact that he's got these like rotten.com lacerated body stuff takes it to a whole nother level so like it's like you see he's got some like cut up stuff like that some stuff from rotten.com you know which is probably most likely real because rotten.com is you know usually real so it's all this rotten.com stuff but let me 
go to this. He, right, he's a skin. He's got. He's literally got a skinhead and KKK stuff. And I'm gonna let's let's see what the sensitive content stuff is, right? Like, right? It's like, look at that. That's crazy, right? And what's this? Look at that. That's crazy. You know, this guy literally has this stuff in his page, and the cops feel no need to uh, like investigate this guy, right? So we're gonna do a thorough investigation. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go look at Robert Allen James. We're gonna go to his C cap. So we're gonna go to uh, C cap. Milwaukee inmate search. We're gonna go to his C cap, and and uh, we're gonna go to case search. This is all public information. Um, we're gonna go to circuit court. All right, and we're gonna uh, type in uh, James Robert. And then Allen, let's type Robert Allen James, boom. So we know it's him, 1983, Robert Allen James, 1983. You know, I'm not going to be, you know, focusing on, you know, you know, traffic. Whoops, let's wait for the video. Yeah, so I'm not going to be focusing on traffic or, you know, um, you know, financial matters. I'm just going to be focusing on, you know, felonies and, you know, crimes and stuff, heinous crimes. You know, uh, you know, these guys have, there's two, two of the guys that found him were sex offenders. And this guy, I believe, is a stalker. Uh, and I believe that he's paying like $51 in restitution, right? So let's, let's look up. This is all public record. You can find this under Wisconsin Circuit Court Access, the CCAP. Um, let's see. So LLC, I'm not clicking on that. That's some, you know, debt type stuff. State of Wisconsin, let's see what this is about. 2021 computer message threatened to injure or harm class B misdemeanor. So this guy is a, a you know on some stalker stuff view case details. So this guy with the KKK stuff that literally you know I sent all this stuff to uh, to Captain uh, Seymour Tabasca and she was just like you know writing it off um, like yeah you know um it's, you know it's freedom of speech it's it's all right that he has KKK stuff all. You know, he's a benevolent KKK person, basically, you know. Um, but, you know, they were reported to the Internal Affairs. Um, Fox News uh, is still waiting for the number for the Internal Affairs. Um, but there is a Fox News uh, reporter that contacted me because, you know, Marcus's uh, uh, old high school football coach, uh, Tim, I'm sorry, Jim Wilson, uh, is now a Fox News director in Milwaukee. All right, so you see, he has a payment plan. is three hundred six dollars. He was stalking somebody. He, uh, you know, sent them a cyber message that he was going to harm them. You know, they called the police. He was arrested. A computer message threatened to injure or harm. He had a guilty plea. All right. Caucasian male. This is the guy that we're going to click back. Let's click back. We're going to click back to show you the guy. This is the guy. The guy that has this KKK stuff on his Facebook right now. Robert Allen James. He sent my mom this picture. So it's like, okay, I'm like, WTF. What's going on here? So we're going to go back. Alright, so this is back to where we were. Now, um, so we see that this happened on uh, on 6-14-2021. And, you know, his last court date was, uh, you know, 8-11, no, 9-14, you know, 9-14, right? So, okay, so that's the first guy. That's the first guy that, that, that was there, right? Now, the second guy, I'm just going to go with the guys with the criminal records first. That's the three of the four. Um, so... So the one guy that I contacted was Sean Kunkel, who had no criminal record. You know, so these other guys, these guys are sex offenders. So the other two guys that found him are friends of Robert Allen James. And first we're going to ascertain that they're friends. So we're going to go to their magnet fishing page called Rusty, uh, the Rusty Magnets. So Rusty Magnets, let's see. 
So the Rusty Magnets, uh, this is Clayton Matul's wife, Jen, Jenny, she's in a video saying like, hey, I don't think you guys should be posting this. Uh, you know, they released a video the day that they found or reported, you know, because we don't know if, if uh, what was going on, because they said that they saw a cadaver body there before they even got there. You know, that might, that could be them, you know, low key admitting that, you know, they rolled there with the cadaver truck and they were throwing him in the river or something, work for somebody. We don't know what they do. You know what I'm saying? These guys have, you know, some, some, uh, extensive criminal records, right? Uh, and so we're going to click on this, um, let's see, special with Rusty. This is where they talk about it. So these are the guys, the three of the guys, of the four guys that were there, the three that happened to have criminal records just happened to be like, yo, we're going to do a live stream. So these are, uh, you know, and, and that's kind of suspicious in itself. You know, the third guy was in the chat. The fourth guy, I mean, was in the chat, Sean Kunkel. But yeah, so this first guy, the Rusty Magnus, this is uh, Clayton Matul. He's a registered sex offender. The second guy, bad influencer, uh, Robert Allen James, he's the one that sent my mom the picture of the dead body. He has uh, uh, got the KKK stuff on his page, and we just went over his cyber, uh, you know, cyber and threatening to harm somebody over the internet. Uh, and now this third guy, Larry Rose, he's also a sex offender. Uh, I believe Rusty Magnets is a child sex offender. Um, you know, so they're both on the sex offender list. Larry Rose goes by Lawrence Rose and the Rusty Magnus guy, uh, Clayton Matul. And we're going to go through their uh, C caps right now. Okay, so, um, and we're going to, you know, go through this video maybe in a whole nother video because uh, this is like an uh, hour long breakdown, but, uh, you know, that video. So we're going back to C cap. We're back into C cap. Now we're going to. Um, Continue the search on Robert Allen James. So there was that we just saw. Now, okay, we're not going to go with motor vehicle stuff. All right, so we're just going to click on the stuff that's dealing with you know penile stuff. Uh, so this was dismissed. So we're not going to go with that. All right. Let's see, is that where we just were? Okay, operating mode without proof of insurance. We're not doing motor vehicle stuff. see so look at that theft movable property under 2500 bucks misdemeanor a da 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 so we so he's a thief and he's a stalker this is robert allen james the one with the kkk stuff the one that goes by bad influencer and if you go to his uh if you go to you know all these guys in their friends pages they just got guns and stuff all over their pages you know, they say that they pull all the guns out the river, but who knows? They could be, you know, putting mud on guns, acting like, you know, and, and be smuggling them. We don't know what they're doing, you know, because these people have been arrested before in the past. And I'll show that video, too, uh, um, uh, like magnet fishing. People get arrested magnet fishing because they're finding bombs all the time. And how do we know they're not, you know, you know, in, in England, they, they ruled it a public nuisance. In some you know ordinances but uh you know um you know so maybe they were magnet fisher guys that were just you know happen to have extensive criminal records that uh found him and that could be the case and there could be other people of interest and we're going to go through those people as well so this is just all alleged you know but these are real crimes and i'm just showing you the the actual c cap all right so we're going to go to the next one we're going to go back to the next one that was uh Let's see. Resisting, obstructing an officer. So resisting, obstructing police officer. And now all of a sudden they're, they're good Samaritans. Maybe that's the case. Guilty to, the, uh, to no contest plea. Right. So we see that. Resisting, obstructing police officer. Charge description. Right. All right, so this, we're just going to go a little bit farther back. This is all with Robert Allen James, 1983. Oh, that was 1963, so that's not him. That's not him, that's somebody else. These last two weren't him. 
resisting police officer. That's not him. So he's just got uh, the uh, the cyber uh, stalking. This is 1963. I didn't realize that. And this is some other Robert James. So yeah, so he's got the cyber stalking. So let's move on to the next guy. Uh, let's see. All right, so the next guy is, uh, in, let's go to where we just were, the bad influencer thing. Uh, let's see. Rusty Magnets. So I'm going to go back to the Rusty Magnets, go to the videos, and go to uh, this one, special with Rusty. This is the one with all three of them. So you can go to this video right now if you want to see, uh, you know, what they say is their side of the story. But, uh, you know, they talk about a lot of uh, wild stuff. You know, they talk about uh, all these other dead bodies that, you know, they found and this and that. You know, Larry Rhodes, uh, who's Lawrence Rhodes, says that he was a, used to be a paramedic in the video. But, you know, uh, we're going to go to his criminal record right now and, and actually see that. He's on the sex offenders list, and I wouldn't think that they would let a sex offender be a paramedic, but maybe this the sex offender thing happened after he was a paramedic, and he's telling the truth, you know, but maybe not. Uh, you know, so we're going to, so uh, we're going to go to that, all right, so I'm going to go to uh, Facebook, I'm going to type Lawrence Rhodes, photos, all right, so this is Lawrence Rhodes. All right, so uh, Lawrence Rhodes right here. That's Lawrence Rhodes. All right, and uh, you know we're gonna go to his C cap. So we're gonna go to C cap. This one right, C cap. Milwaukee inmate search. All right, case court system. All right, circuit court. All right. Okay, so we're going to go to, uh, I'm going to write, his last name is Rhodes. We're going to go to Lawrence. All right, and let's, he's the, the, the uncle, I believe, of Robert Allen James. All right, so this is Lawrence Rhodes. This is like a divorce. Lawrence Rose vs. Reagan looks like a divorce type of thing. No small claims. All right, so we're not going with financial stuff. I'm not judging people on financial. I'm just talking about criminal stuff. All right, so attempted third degree sexual assault, a G class felony. This is Lawrence Rhodes. Attempted third degree sexual assault, guilty to no contest plea. All right, that's that's a. Uh, that's pretty serious, right? And we don't know if he was sexually assaulted because, you know, the people, the medical examiners, you know, uh, we don't even have all the pictures of his body yet, you know? And we don't know how seriously they actually investigated these things. Um, so that's why we're having to get our own private investigator. You know, he was found with a torn sleeve and lacerations on his arms, uh, you know, face down the river. Uh, but yeah, to see, um, let me see. So defendant to submit DNA sample and pay the surcharge, $250, da, da, da. Uh, defendant to have no contact whatsoever with SBB. I'm assuming that's the name of the victim. Uh, defendant to actively participate and, success and successfully complete sex offender treatment and any other counseling as recommended by the agent. Defendant to register as a sex offender. So yeah, if you type in the sex, he's, they're on the official sex offenders list this and one of the other guys. So, you know, that's why, you know, this was just alarming. And I told the detectives and, you know, as a family, we told them and they're just like, uh, you know, we don't care. Like, and this kind of reminds me of laundry, the whole laundry thing, because, you know, just like with laundry, they let them off. And then, we, you know, we find that, you know, laundry really was behind all that stuff, you know, and, and uh, you know, that's why laundry ran away but you know we don't know um so yeah so you know there, there's a lot of uh potential people that could be involved in this but uh yeah the, there's you know um our family needs a lot of answers you know and the detectives really aren't really pushing for that um they've actually been rude to friends and family of marcus um 
So yeah, so that's pretty heinous crime right there, right? So I just clicked on that. That was number two. Um, well, let's go to number three. So it's the same guy, 1970. Uh, so it's divorce. Let's keep going. Small claims. Keep going. Repelvin, though. Repelvin is a form of, I believe, is some type of theft, you know. That's another name for theft. Let's type in, just to be on point, replevin. I mean, replevin. That's the word of the day. Replevin, a procedure whereby seized goods may be provisionally restored to their owner pending that the outcome of an action to determine the rights of the parties concerned. An action seeking return of personal property wrongfully taken or held by the defendant. Rules on replevin actions vary by jurisdiction. And Wiki says replevin or claim and delivery, sometimes called revindication, is a legal remedy which enables a person to recover personal property taken wrongfully. Okay, so that's like a theft. Right. Um, let's see. Let's, let's go over here which one was i at oops that was the wrong one i just was 79 all right so let me hit this one all right small claim stuff i'm not going into financial stuff but the replevin you know all right theft movable property under a thousand so these are the guys that found him. Now, yeah, maybe they were just searching for junk and they just happen to have criminal records. But, uh, you know, we're just checking everything out. So theft, this is actual theft. Theft movable property. So maybe he was sitting, he was caught in a car that was uh, stolen. Let's see a few history details. So Judge Huber privileges, that means they can work. Uh, let's see. You know, and uh, you know, these guys get did serious jail time. We didn't even go back to the actual jail time of the uh of that first charge. Let's go to here, let's see that's zero eight two. Uh, let's go to this last one. And that's just a divorce, but that's not that's right, but let's go back to this right here, the second one, and see the actual amount of time that he did, because that's important to know, like, yo, as far as, you know, cats being like, oh, you know, they're innocent. We don't know that. I don't know, you know, but maybe they are innocent. Uh, let's see. View history and details, charges of sentence. Time, 24 months. Sentence, 36 months. So that's a couple of years. So some hardened felons find my cousin, right? This that's that's fact. So that was that's one of the guy, Lawrence Rhodes. Uh, now this other guy, we're gonna go back to the rusty magnets. The rusty magnets, their crew. So this is the musty magnets. So this guy, so we went to this guy, bad influencer. That's. Uh, Robert Allen James, Larry Rose is Lawrence Rose that we just went to. Now we're going to go to Clayton Matul. He's also a sex offender. Clayton Matul. All right, so we're going to go to his Facebook first. That's the guy that's the Rusty Magnets. Uh, Clayton Matul. Uh, so we're going to go to Clayton Matul Facebook. These are all public. You would think with people with records like this wouldn't make their stuff public. But this is involving the, the case of, of uh, Marcus. All right, so this is Clayton. Right here on the right, that's Clayton. And in the video that we'll play later, Jen can be uh, seen saying, you know, you shouldn't be recording this. All right, so now we're gonna go to uh, his uh, CCAP, 
So let's see, maybe I can just click back and get back to CCAP. Maybe I can just get back to, right, great. So now I can just hit, uh, what do you call it on the tool? Type Clayton. Now you can see I ch checked my own name in there too because I don't have anything in there, but I was just curious. Um, because my dad doesn't have anything in there either because he has the same name, but I was curious. Uh, so let me see. Search Clayton Matul. Um, so let's start it start up here. So let's start up top. This is Clayton Tool, nineteen eighty six. Receiving or concealing stolen property under twenty five thousand, under twenty five hundred. Theft, movable property, party to a crime, guilty plea. One part was, this part was uh, dismissed, the theft part, but receiving. So maybe he got a stolen car and he's just saying he didn't know about it or something. Um, let's see. Theft, party to a crime. Time one year, second one five months, but one of them got he got off on one. All right, so that's just one. So all right, so let's click on another one. All right, small claim. I'm not looking at financial stuff, just criminal stuff. All right, speeding. Not looking at traffic. All right, so vile. Oh no, that's just traffic. But that's still bad, obviously, not putting a seatbelt on a kid. But uh, let's see. All right, so harassment restraining order. We see that. So the other guy, I remember, had the harassment, um, cyber stalking, uh, death threat type of thing on somebody, you know. And, you know, so th this is all public information. Um, you can go to, you know, Wisconsin CCAP. And, yeah, so restraining order so um you know let's see what happened uh, he's got to avoid them da, 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 in all places so yeah so we see that's a you know restraining order so let's keep going down all right disorderly conduct right And, you know, our family has been seeking information and justice. We don't know what's going on. Resisting or disrupting an officer. You can see all this. And as we can see, even with the person that did the massacre at the parade in uh, Kenosha a day after this happened, you know, the, the, the MPD is clearly not you know, people with a lot of penalty, like with a lot of uh, extensive records, they're, they're letting them out, you know, they're negligent in a lot of different ways, not, you know, and in this realm, they're just looking at it like, you know, Marcus Wanzo to them, uh, you know, they were being extremely racist and, you know, Ted Chisholm apologized for all that. All right, now, um, so let's go to the next one. Let's go farther down. And we're just getting background info. Because I don't know, you know, any of these people. All right, money judgment, we're not going to look at that. Junction, harassment, restraining order. You see that? So we see, we see patterns here. All right. Felony, fourth degree, sexual assault. Let's click on that. Jumping bail, repeat it. So let's see, how much time was that? Five years, that's a long time. He, did, he got five years. Um, I mean, you would think the more, the more years, the more heinous. 
Look at this. Repeated second degree, second sex assault, same uh, same child, uh, a class C felony in Wisconsin. Right? This is a lot of stuff. And we don't know if he was sexually assaulted as, w as well, you know? It's like, uh, let's see. So this is just looking for that. So yeah, HIV testing, da da da. Um, this is all just public record, right? So let me click on the details, view history and details. All right, so must report as offender, no contact with victim or her family, must continue with counseling. So it's child abuse, potentially harm. Pretty, so th th this, these are the guys, these three guys that I showed you before are the ones that found him, right? So let me see. So now uh, we went through them. Uh, now the fourth guy, uh, let's see if we, I guess we haven't gone through everything yet. Uh, there's still a little bit more down here. Criminal damage to property. So how do we know these guys didn't rob him? You know, because we tend to, you know, that whole, you know, laundry syndrome of like, oh, you know, you know, they're, you know, Andy Griffith, you know, nice, not nose American uh, Euro boys that are, you know, not intending to harm anybody. They just stumbled upon, you know, this horrible thing. You know, and that's possible. That is very, very possible. You know, but, uh, you know, they told us a lot of things that don't line up with um, in their video. They're telling the world a lot of things that don't line up with, you know, a lot of the medical reports or, you know, they're saying that it was an aneurysm that they, the medical examiner and the or the fire department, whoever was out there that day told them that it was uh, an aneurysm. Uh, Robert Allen told uh, my mom he had a concussion but the medical examiners say there was no concussion, you know, so maybe they hit him on the head and they just assumed there'd be a concussion and they knew they'd be protected. Or maybe they were dropping a body off. You know, we don't know what's going on. He says there was a van. They said that there was a van, uh, 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 a do uh, organ donor van there before they got there at the park at, Tr at uh, Valley Park. All right, so we're going to go back, criminal damage. All right, so we just saw that criminal damage. Probably that's 2003. Now we're going to go way farther back. Uh, this is battery, resisting arrest, obstructing officers. It's like just all types of stuff. And this was the guy that was talking the most in the video. So it just kind of seems strange, like, you know, the guy with no criminal record is quiet. And the guy, all the three guys with uh, criminal records are, you know, making a whole video out of it. All right, so let's see. So yeah, people want answers. This is just all the information all in one place. All right, so we see all that. So that's that's a lot of, you know, battery, you know, um, this is 2003. So this is all stuff within the past 20 years. Um, they had no contact with the victim. Uh, all right, so let's uh, get out of here. Now let's, uh, so now let's go back, to, let's go to some of these pictures now. Um, so the first picture I'm going to pull, uh, get pulled back is, uh, this one. Uh, this is, uh, let, let's actually go to, um, their, this thing right here. All right. So let me pull this in. Pull this picture in. Let's see if it works. All right. All right, so back to this. This is what Robert Allen James uh, posted, right? This is what Robert Allen James posted. And um, now we're going to go to the actual news articles um, and uh, go through those. So, yeah, Robert Allen James sent this, this picture to my mom. 
you know, so that, that and the, you know, once again, Captain Seymour Tabasca said this is okay, as, along with Slim Chesky and the, and the Milwaukee MPD, you know, it's, you know, very, very scary to, scary to us. Uh, you know, uh, our family contacted Black Lives Matter. They haven't said anything or done anything. They said it's interesting to them, but they haven't done anything, nor has we contacted the Action Network, contacted Trump, Crump. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, this was two days after the Rittenhouse verdict. All right, so now I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to click back. Now we're going to go to uh, um, some other uh, potential suspects. Uh, but let me go to the fourth person that was there, uh, Sean Kunkel, who sent the pictures of the, uh, let's see, Sean Kunkel. This is Sean Kunkel, who sent the pictures of uh, the, uh, um, he's very helpful in sending the pictures of where he believes they found uh, the body, you know. But, uh, you know, maybe these guys robbed him, maybe not. You know, maybe it was somebody else. So now we're going to look at other possibilities. Now, there's another possibility. Uh, now, somebody that had given him death threats in the past. All right, these, we're going to talk about people that he's fought in the past, the people that have given him threats. Um, now, somebody who he has uh, has given thre him threats in the past. We're going to go to uh, Pebbles. I'll type Pebbles. Pebbles Hunt or Pebbles Harmon. Now, this is Pebbles Harmon, Pebbles Hunt. Uh, this cute little girl right here is actually not her daughter, but she actually kidnapped this little girl along with another, uh, her older, with this little girl's older sister. This is the daughter of Melissa. Um, and uh, he says, she says, I kept my baby up. You know, like, this is her baby. So, uh, Pe Pebbles Harmon is also a.k.a. Uh, Latricia Hunt. And um, Latricia Hunt actually, uh, you know, she used to be the babysitter of these kids. And she got fired. And when the woman that was her former employer, Melissa, was out of town, she kidnapped the kids with her mom, Regina Harmon. And, um, you know, and all that stuff is pending because it just happened recently, like maybe a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. Um, and we're going to go to CCAP right now. And, uh, but yeah, so, so, you know, she, uh, these kids were also, uh, I believe a teacher reported them being abused at school, uh, when Peb when Pebbles, AKA Latricia Hunt brought them in. So this is not her daughter, but she's like stalking this woman and acting like this is her daughter. This is months after she fired her after the, the, you know, the CPS rescued the kids from this woman's house, from Pebbles Harmon's house and so this woman is a very very dangerous woman um her we had to bounce her mom from our from the funeral um you know uh she's you know not the child you know she has her own kids i believe but she's not the mother of these children but she, this is uh latricia hunt that uh melissa who is marcus's ex-girlfriend had a restraining order um has a restraining order against currently that was just filed on the 14th so you can see you know she's uh uh uh, uh um what do you call it i would say a stud right she's a stud that kidnapped you know this little girl right here she she kidnapped this little girl and you know this little girl right here she kidnapped her um and i sent melissa these pictures melissa is terrified of this woman you know, she just, that's why she just got the, you know, restraining order approved. Um, this woman has, is, you know, uh, trying to make it look like these are her kids or something. And uh, we're going to go to her um, thing right now. All right. And just to show you, uh, uh, let me see if I can find this. I'm going to type this right here. All right, I'm going to bring that in. Uh, so this is Marcus. This was uh, the street naming when uh, this is my grandfather's pic, a picture of my grandfather, you know, when the street was being named after him on Burleigh. And this is this, uh, me and some of my family members. And Marcus is over here on the end. And, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, this was about a year ago, maybe. And right next to him is Melissa, his ex-girlfriend, uh, who those kids that I showed you that just got kidnapped. Um, this is a, a woman that's in a wheelchair. And, you know, the, the woman that I just showed you, Latricia Hunt, literally, and her mother, Regina Harmon, literally just ran up in their spot and, and kidnapped her children. Literally, I mean, I can't imagine that happening you know I, I you know so this woman and her uh this woman's given gave marcus multiple death threats in the past like you know um you know people you know some people that's a figure of speech you know uh you know when people say stuff like that but sometimes you know people take those things into reality um latricia's brother is a um a big drug dealer in milwaukee who just went on a car chase with with police actually and got away, but you know, they had him on camera. And you know, it's just like, yo, maybe he has something to do with this, with Marcus's death, his his brother, uh, I'm not his brother, his homie, uh, Michael An Michael Anthony Bridges, who, who beat up Marcus in the past, might have had something to do with it too, you know? Uh, so we're gonna go through all that. So this is Latricia Hunt, Let so I'm gonna go to, uh, Back to uh, CCAP, CCAP Milwaukee inmate search. And we're going to look up all this because this is all public information stuff. All right. Now we're going to go to case search, circuit court. All right. So I'm going to type in Hunt. I'm going to type Latricia. All right. So let's do search. So we see 1214. This is the most recent one. And this is harassment restraining order, um, courthouse injunction hearing. So this is against Melissa. So you see it says a petitioner's not her name in there, but the woman that I was showing you in the picture in the wheelchair, uh, you know, Latricia literally uh, kidnapped her kids. She used to be her babysitter, so she had a key to the house. And... You know, but she had been fired, but she used that key to the house to kidnap the kids and ransack. She ransacked the house through like a party in there. Like, you know, um, you know, she's she's been claiming her on her, her IRS. There's like the open investigation for uh, Latricia um, using Melissa's IRS stuff. And, you know, it's just all types of, um, you know, craziness. So, you know, obviously this could be a separate situation, but this could be overlap because this was you know, uh, within, uh, the same night, oops, the same night that, um, was key to this, what's also key to this case is that the same night that, it keeps cutting off, what's key to this case also is that the same night that, um, keeps cutting off, what's key to this case is that, uh, that's why I keep repeating it, what's key to this case is that the same night that Marcus was found, his body was found. Uh, Jason Hunt, Latricia's brother, uh, who's a convicted drug dealer, uh, came to Melissa's house and, uh, you know, hadn't talked to her in like two years. And before that, he was trying to extort her for money, um, saying that some, some, some drug dealers were going to kill him. And, and uh, you know, he and he had to get ten thousand dollars to these guys, or they were going to take him out, or something like that. So she ended up loaning him like forty eight hundred bucks and stuff like that. And you know he had promised to pay her back, um, but he never paid her um, back fully. He gave her like a couple hundred bucks, you know. Um, so he came to her house strangely that night that Marcus died, and he hadn't seen her in a long time. So that's very suspicious. And he also called her about Marcus's death, and we. Uh, don't believe Victoria Wenzel told Jason Hunt um, about his death, but we still have to find out that one point of information because he knew very, Jason Hunt knew very very early in the morning about about his death. So it could have been something surrounding Jason Hunt and Michael Anthony Bridges, and we're going to look up those names as well. So uh, so we just looked up Latricia Hunt. All right, so that's Latricia Hunt. Now, uh, we're going to go to uh, Regina Harmon, her mom, who was also there. All right, let's see some of the type. Regina Harmon. 
Let's see, Regina Harmon. And we're probably not going to actually, I have to probably go to Pebbles. Maybe let me go to Pebbles. Um, but she might not have her mom on there. Um, yeah, her mom's right here. This is Regina Harmon, who uh, has been verified to have told people um, that, you know, she envisions, you know, taking custody of Melissa's children, the those two, uh, the children that were kidnapped that I showed y'all before uh, in those pictures, the pictures that are right next to this picture. Um, and, uh, you know, so she, along with her daughter, Latricia, kidnapped those kids, you know, and, you know, CPS had to recover them. Um, and, you know, that's just this very, very shocking. Right. Um, so let's see. So, yeah, like th these those kid this this little girl is not her little girl. And she's posting pictures. You know, this is somebody she used to babysit. All right. So we're going to go to Regina Harmon, the mother. This is whom, whom uh, had to be bounced from the funeral. Whoops, let me go to uh, CCAP. CCAP. All right, so this might take a second. There we go. So let's go back. All right, we're going to CCAP. All right. So I'm going to type Harmon and uh, Regina. All right, so so this is a, a restraining order. This one was denied. So this is you know the restraining orders against both of them. Um, so all that stuff is pending, with with the kidnapping and all that type of stuff. Um, you know because it's, right now it's just in CPS court since they used to be former babysitters. They're taking it more lightly than they should. Uh, I'll say that again since the signal was down. This is in like CPS court and like family court, so they're taking it more lightly than. They're taking it more lightly than they should be. Um, but yeah, so, you know, this is, uh, you know, could be related. Maybe it's not related. But uh, it seems like it's related because Jason came to her house that night. But yeah, Jason came to her house that night. So it seems like this could be related. All right, so um, I'm going to go back. Um, let's see. So we saw that. All right. And the rest of the stuff is just like, I believe I've already gone through this. It's, it's pretty much just, um, oh, disorderly conduct. She has a, all right. Disorderly conduct. Right. Let's keep in this look. But this looks like she was part of a class action thing. So she was the plaintiff, not the defendant. So let's look at that. All right, so that's the one we just saw, the disorderly conduct. All right. Car accident, but let's see. All right, so domestic abuse, temporary restraining order, petitioner, Gina Harmon against Ricky Hunt. So that was her against her um, children's father. All right, so, um, so, uh, yeah, so then there's that. Now let's go to Jason Hunt. All right, so I'm going to type Jason, and it's spelled Jason Hunt. Jason Hunt. Now let's go to, uh, this is Jason Hunt 1982. Let's go to 2004. Manufactured, deliver cocaine, class D felony, Wisconsin statutes, charges in this case, da da da. View case decals, 2004. So, you know, Marcus was friends uh, or knew Jason, you know, and, you know, Jason uh, might have, you know, it might have been the type of place where they were where Jason might have met up with him to, you know, get him some trees or something like that and maybe. I don't know why this this signal keeps going out. This I don't know why the signal goes out even though I have the fastest internet that there's supposed to be um, out here. But uh, yeah, so you know, you know, maybe Jason got some trees 
I mean, maybe he got some treats from Jason and, 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 you know, Michael Anthony Bridges have popped out of the blue and, you know, and knocked Marcus out or something. We don't know. Maybe he got, he, somebody gave him a drink and poisoned him and threw him in the river. We don't know. You know, he was a big guy, you know, and he knows, knew how to survive in the water, you know, and he's a great swimmer. So it's like, we know he didn't drown. So what happened to him? Um, now, and we also don't even know if he was organ harvested, you know, and the guys, it, I'll show the, video, the guys saying that they saw, um, like, a, a body donor vehicle thing, you know, and they were saying they thought it was because, you know, there was some other shootings, but that day, but that was far away. It was like on, this was like around 44th street or something that I feel like that was, it was like 70 something street where the two other people got killed far way farther up another side of town higher north um but yeah so this is uh you know um something from 2004 this is jason lee hunt uh who you know is connected with latricia so remember latricia gave him multiple death threats you know militia uh latricia was being very malicious towards uh, Marcus for years. So look, attempted theft, movable property. So, you know, these are all, you know, um, this is, you know, a potential suspect as well. Jason Hunt, um, due to his connecting with Latricia and his friend having beat up Marcus before. And, you know, look, and what Jason Hunt was also doing was extorting Marcus's ex-girlfriend. He broke into her house as well. Um, this is all coming from Melissa um, Bertrand. And, you know, she's scared for her life right now, you know, um, that finding Marcus dead. And then, um, you know, her kids even told her, the kids that were kidnapped were like, they thought this guy, Jason, probably killed Marcus. They're like, we think Jason did it. You know, after they were recovered and after they found out Marcus was dead right after that. You know, um, so this is all very scary for their family, you know, and for our family as well. Um, yeah, so um, so let's let's move to the next one. All right, that was fifty six. Let's move up. All right, small clans. We're not looking at that stuff. Small clans. Not looking at that. All right, we're not looking at that. So yeah, we see that he has you know prior arrest for for theft and drug convictions, but he hasn't been getting caught recently. Um, all right, and you know, and it's you know they have very actual verified video of him in his church char car. I don't know if I think I believe it might be Saint Gabriel Church, but a church van he was in a police chase with like kind of recently and but they have it on video but they were never able to capture him all right so you know now we're going to go to his friend michael anthony uh uh bridges now do we have a picture of actual of jason let's look up uh let's go to uh, pebbles pebbles this page and see if there's actual picture of jason i believe there might be a picture of jason somewhere uh let's look farther down there we go um not let me go to i believe it's another one find a picture but yeah this is the woman that kidnapped melissa's kids she she kidnapped literally kidnapped um two of melissa's children for about six days so she's a former babysitter who um and all that's you know documented cps recover the kids um, but I'm looking for her brother who, you know, cause she's, you know, so this woman, she's threatened Marcus's life many times. That's why I'm, I'm including this. Um, but right here, this guy on the far right, this guy on the far right here, Ricky, that's Rick Hunt is the, is the one, uh, that is, uh, you know, rolling with Michael Anthony that beat up Marcus in the past that we just went over his record right now with the cocaine dealing. All right, so now um, now his friend, Ricky Hunt, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna type, uh, I'm sorry, not Ricky Hunt, uh, uh, Michael Anthony Bridges, I'm gonna go back to CCAP, 
Let's go back to CCAP if we can get back to CCAP. There we go if we can get back to C Oh, well, let me see. I can go this way at least. Get back to CCAP. Now, um, we're gonna, there's going to be two people, two more people we're going to research. All right, so Bridges, last name Bridges, first name Michael. All right, and, and I'll even type, uh, well, I'm not going to type Anthony. I don't need to. Bridges. So Michael Bridges, Michael Anthony Bridges, you see. This is the guy that beat Michael, uh, beat Marcus up in the past, and he's a friend of Jason Hunt. Um and you know uh, he's potentially you know somebody, and and him and Marcus when they fought each other it was like they really got the best of each other. They really you know uh, you know Marcus was a pacifist. He was trying to stop the fight. I mean Mar Marcus was known to fight. I'm not saying he was a pacifist, but he was the type to try to not fight in front of people or kids like the kids there. It was Melissa's children and Mike and Michael tried to fight. Melissa's children, and Marcus was like, no, we don't need to be fighting in front of kids. He was trying to take the higher road, but Michael attacked him, and he had to fight him, and they both hurt each other pretty bad. So, you know, we have a, a, a motive, all right? So we're going to go through uh, Michael Anthony Bridges' stuff, all right? So we're going to start with this one. I haven't even been through all this stuff, as you can see. All right. Resisting arrest, disorderly conduct. Bail jumping, da da da. All right, so let's move on. Uh, let's start from 2000. Let's go the other way. This case that has not been concluded. That's just traffic. We're not looking at traffic, nor are we looking at financial stuff. All right, so found possession of THC, unclassified misdemeanor. All right, um, retail theft, intentional retail theft, possession of THC, so he got caught stealing. Um, let me see, so let me move on, next one. Violate domestic abuse, injunction, bail jumping, misdemeanor. Uh, so this is domestic abuse, this history of charges. Um, and yeah, it sucks that I have to do this on, on, uh, on the holidays for people, but you know, this has to come out right now. Uh, I can't keep it any longer. You know, the information has to come out. Um, but y'all saw that was strange how the, when I first went to Robert Allen James's page, it didn't show up all that crazy stuff. And then it did, you know, that was that very interesting. I had to go there twice and that we have the recording of that, you know, their algorithms are clearly protecting all that type of stuff. Um, now, let's see. So, let's see. Violent domestic abuse. So, we can see. Let's see. So, there's house of correction and probation. So, it's two of them. Eight months, 18 months. All right, so let me get, get out of there. It might have been transferred to some another state or something. But yeah, let me see. Let's go to here. Domestic abuse, tem temporary restraining order. So uh, I believe when they fought, you know, they, they literally like ran through a wall, you know, like it was one of those type of fights, you know, like a real serious kind of fight. So, you know, this guy is clearly, is, you know, these are all, you know, uh, people that are co either connected to or actual persons of interest, allegedly, you know, um, they could possibly be um, violated. Um, so, yeah, we just saw that domestic abuse. All right, let's get out of the financial stuff. Unclassified. So what is it? Default judgment. Um, it's just financial stuff. All right, petition of THCs, 
problem with that, but let's see if anybody's... Alright, so disorderly conduct. Oh, let's go higher. I'm just trying to get through this fast so it's not taking forever. So, just eviction. Alright, so not concluded. But what is this traffic? Maybe. Nope, disorderly conduct, domestic abuse, habitual, habitual criminality, repeater. You know, but it's interesting. You can even see, uh, even within this, you know, that they're treating his criminal record a black guy different than those Caucasian people with like real extreme records they didn't call them habitual even though they have habitual stealing but uh yeah this is something I just noticed but yeah so you know he's got a extensive criminal record uh this guy and I don't have a picture of him you know I don't know of a picture of him online but uh you know this is Michael Anthony Bridges and this is the guy that uh beat up Marcus in the past right you know, if if somebody ends up dead and you, you know, pummeled them down in the past before, you know, that's that's the kind of person that should be investigated and the and the detectives aren't investigating. That's why we're going to have to be doing this fundraiser, you know, like a, a GoFundMe to raise money for a private investigator. All right, so let's go to the next one. All right, so it's that, let's see... Attorney, domestic abuse, battery, da da, death removal property. Alright. A lot of a lot a lot of stuff in here. So history. So we see these same things, theft, movable property, just like the other guys, you know. And maybe these guys are all working together. But maybe not. Maybe it's just a couple of these people that did it. Maybe it's just one. You know? Um, but we want answers, you know, and the toxicology reports not, they're taking super long. The woman from Fox, Amanda from Fox was like, I can't believe that it's, they're saying that it's going to take, you know, 10 weeks for the toxicology report. That's a very abnormal amount of time. And obviously, you know, the, the longer time they can make things take the, the, the slower, you know, due process happens and, you know, they can, uh, you know, uh, increase the swamp, you know, and, and, and as y'all have been seeing, I've been draining the swamp in the turntables and world. I'll be moving into the, you know, um, uh, rap world as well. But, uh, you know, it, this is something within my own family's life. And, you know, this is really, really serious, you know, and, you know, I was just chilling with my cousin. He's, he was just at my baby shower on, uh, on 4th of July, you know, I was just chilling with him, uh, you know, on the, the side of the lake. And I was just warning him, too, about getting out of Milwaukee, about how it's unsafe for black males, you know, if you're not in the city with, like, a black mayor, seriously, because, you know. And also, it's also important to note this, too, that the uh, the first day, I believe, uh, November 20th, was also um, a, a buck hunting season, the beginning of buck hunting season. Uh, let me pull that up. And I think that's kind of uh, a very important thing as far as, you know, you know, if we we're talking about, you know, how people, you know, the status quo in Milwaukee viewed Marcus, you know, when they view black males, they view us as bucks. I was actually telling Marcus he needs to get out of, out of Milwaukee, but statewide gun deer hunting season begins this Saturday. So Saturday the 20th was the beginning of, of, uh, of buck hunting season right okay so let me let me click back all right so we did uh michael anthony bridges um another suspect and the last one we'll do is jordan basma he still hasn't returned marcus's cell phone to our family we've been asking for the phone um and even more fervently asking for the phone over the past like week and a half but he says he saw Marcus either that Friday or that Thursday before he was found on Saturday. He says he can't remember. And he says his phone in his car, but he can't remember where it is. So obviously he could be. A, he uh, is also a he had a um, he was he was also in Afghanistan at the same time Marcus was, but they didn't know each other at that time in Afghanistan. Um, so we're going to search his name. His name is 
Basma. And the first name is Jordan. And the thing about Jordan Basma is that, you know, he told us that he left, Mar Marcus left his uh, phone in his car. You go to here, it says that, you know, he's not even supposed to be driving. So maybe he was driving, but just without a license. But, you know, he's got a, a you know, um, he's been driving with, with no license for a long time, DUIs and stuff like that. And he told us that it's in his car, but he can't find it. You know, and, you know, it just sounds kind of shady that he would say that he has his phone, you know, because people have called the phone and, you know, I feel like somebody might have picked up before. We don't know, uh, you know, but it it's very, very uh, scary that he hasn't returned the phone yet. You know, that's why I'm doing this is an emergency. And, you know, if you're hearing this, Jordan, please return the phone. You know, um, uh, I told, you know, Fox News contacted us and. You know, we told them about this. I'll see. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, he's got some uh, a revoked license and he's still being catching more DUIs. Um, and we're going to go to here. View case details. Right. So, and he just told us that, you know, it, that he believes it's, it's in his car. So he, he refused to take a, a test. But... You know, this guy was a, a golf soldier. He's got, like, uh, him shooting guns on his page. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, that that's he's also a potential suspect. Now, let's go through this thing right here. We're going to, now we're going to go to, uh, let's see, we're going to go to Bad Influencer. Bad Influencer. So, remember, this is Robert Allen James, the guy with all the KKK stuff on his page. And this is them walking through the canal that day. So let's see. Now, if you saw the video of me going to this, uh, well, I guess I gotta uh, make this loud so you can actually hear it. So you can actually hear it, maybe. But it should be playing through the headphone. So y'all saw that crowbar, that crowbar that he drops in the video, um, that actual crowbar, I went to that location in Milwaukee and that crowbar wasn't there. And it was only, you know, less than a month after, because a month to this day would have been like the 20th of this month, it happened on the 20th of last month. I went there, nothing, there was no crowbar there. The water did rise a bunch, but it hadn't risen up to that point where the crowbar was. <clears throat> and that can be seen uh, in this video right here. I believe I have them uh, both together. Let me find the actual picture. But let me uh, play this first, and then I'll show the crowbar thing. <clears throat> So they say they found his body. Let's see. So you know, it's like for 
in, in you know these guys that it could be they could be a cleanup crew and they are throwing up a body out there this one guy he's got like looks like he had a, a, a swastika on his hand at one point I'll show you all the pictures of that I got a lot of pictures to, to, to go through but basically they say that they were just you know looking for junk on the side of the river and found him <coughs> but uh you know um these guys have extensive extensive records and you know we just want some answers as a family um so let's let's look so they found him farther down the river like you know where uh maybe to the to the left um I'm not sure if he's in this. Yeah, he's not in this picture. But uh, yeah, they found him in a different part of the river. No, that's not in this picture. Um, I'm gonna let it play. See, they just have stills at the end, at the end of this. Now I went to that. So it says yeah, the discovery came across was too crazy for the viewers. Um. So what I'm going to do now, um, first I'm going to go back to uh, the uh, the articles on this. I'm going to go to uh, body pool from Menominee River. Let's go to Fox 6 first. We're going to play this. Milwaukee PD are also investigating the death of a 29 year old man whose body was found in the Menominee River. Authorities were called to the scene near 42nd and Mount Vernon just before 1230 this afternoon. An autopsy is scheduled for Monday. So the autopsy came back with, um, let me see, let me pull out the PDF. Got the PDF right here. This is the autopsy. Oh, wait, no, that's, the wrong one. that's the wrong one. Let's find the right form. Uh, here's a good the demographic report. So here's the form. I gave this to a woman at Fox. She wanted the form. But yeah, this is like the medical examiner report. Um, and uh, we can see all this information right here, um, you know, for those that want any, any information about this. But this is the medical examiner. Um, so I'll read through these. This is case number 21-08293. Preliminary manner accident, so that's what the preliminary ruling was. But you know, obviously, you know, he's got lacerations and his jacket was ripped up, you know, and he was a great swimmer and he was and he was a trained soldier. So, doesn't seem like an accident, especially if somebody's a trained soldier. Uh, somebody would need to take them out, right? To you know, but uh, and you know, there wasn't like he broke his leg or he jumped off of a high place or something like that. Um, he was in the water behind the Braves, I mean, the, the Brewers parking lot. All right, so the name is deceased, Marcus T. Wanzo Jr. They don't have Jr. in there. And that could be messing up paperwork, too, because uh, it's does you know, his father's name. Uh, call taken by Luke Warnke, D-M-A-M-D-I, okay, reported by Lieutenant Zachary Hennessy. He fired apartment. Um, reporting agency, yeah, so now this was the count, so this was a resident street, um, 28, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53, 21, 2, huh, so he had his ID on him, yet they didn't take him to his Aunt Kathy's house where he lived. Um, he also had a place at a, a vet storm. Um, yeah, so you can see all this information here found by firefighter agency, found by MFD. 
Um, but when you see the video of the guy, four guys that say they originally found him, they say, you know, the police and all these people were there. You know, um, you know it just seems like there's a lot of holes in all this. Um, because it says the fire fires found him here, not necessarily the police, but, you know, obviously they came later. Um, but, uh, you know, the guys in the video just are, they say a lot of weird stuff and we'll go through that as well. Um, and also, uh, you know, I forgot about this person right here, Victoria Nelson, also known as, uh, AKA Victoria Wanzo. Um, you know, she was negligent in the death of, uh, Marcus Jr.'s, um, father, Marcus Wanzo Sr. And before, the last time I actually saw Marcus Jr., I warned him, I was like, please be careful, don't associate with Victoria, her daughter, because, you know, um, Victoria had some, has some brothers that are thugs that beat up Mar big Marcus in the past, Marcus Sr., and, you know, um, you know, she was, uh, you know, a trained nurse who went for 15 minutes after she found him on the floor, past or on the floor, you know, uh, not motionless. She waited to call for 15, she waited to 15 minutes to call 911, which is clearly negligence given that she's a medical professional, you know, so I warned him about, you know, that she had family and she's done some reckless kind of stuff because she raised his insurance policy that year. She was trying to get him to get off of his oxygen tank. Marcus Sr. had an oxygen tank. Um, you know, she was trying to get him off of that, you know, so, you know, stuff and she was negligent in his death. And, um, you know, so, so she's also, um, even a person of interest and we don't know, uh, you know, I asked her if she, has an insurance policy on Marcus because she had an insurance policy on his father. And, uh, you know, his, his father, she was very much responsible for his death, but still got the policy. And I asked her if she had a policy on him because she had been caught before, uh, you know, faking him on, uh, on her tax returns, you know, and claiming him as her son. All right. Now, um, so we're going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to back to CCAP. Maybe I can just get through here to CCAP. Maybe will this take me to CCAP? I'll have to type all that in again. There we go. All right, so now we're going to type uh, Victoria Wanzo as well. Um, so let's see. Wanzo. Victoria. The Nelson stuff doesn't really come up. But, uh, you know, and, you know, let's go here. So let's do this monetary stuff. We're not looking at that. Not looking at mortgage. All right, so domestic abuse, temporary restraining order, injunction granted. Uh, I believe she has a gun injunction here, too. She's not allowed to have a... She might have threatened the person that she might use her gun or something. I, I believe she's not allowed to have a gun. The respondent shall surrender any firearms to the sheriff of this county. The respondent was present in court and personally served with a copy of this order. Um, so, yeah, maybe she was threatening the harm with her gun or something like that. And this woman is actually has the nerve to be a, uh, you know, she actually extorted my grandfather to become uh, ordained. She told him that she would actually, um, you know, put my, get my uncle arrested um, if she didn't make him an ordained, you know, give him a priesthood or whatever. Give her a priesthood, you know, and he ordained her. He wanted just to keep the peace and make everything good. But, you know, she's a con artist to me. That's my personal opinion. But I was there, you know, when the firemen were trying to resuscitate Marcus Sr., and, you know, uh, she literally called, you know, it's literally written down on paper, she called 15 minutes late, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, and I was just warning Marcus Jr. about her, you know, the last time I saw him. So, you know, um, obviously she could also be a person of interest. So let's go back to some more information. All right, so we saw the video of those guys at the at the location at the spot. Now there's another entrance over here. Um, 
I'm going to bring in this entrance. All right, so there's the entrance right here. Now, so, you know, there's the entrance that the graffiti people come in, but then there's also entrance on this side. This is in the, in the Brewer Stadium, like parking lot area, kind of like, you know, that's more of like an abandoned spot right here. But if you go over to the right, it's, it's the actual parking lot. If you go all the way over to the left, it's the Brewer's parking lot. So he was found in the Brewer's parking lot, ri the river behind the Brewer's parking lot. You know, and this isn't on the news, you know, that somebody with a street named after them's, you know, grandson is found in the river, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, we're, we're going to move to some more pictures. All right. So this picture right here, this is Robert Allen Jam, one of his pictures that's on his uh, Facebook that we already went through. And this is one of Robert Allen James's pictures. And it's like, you know, um... I can't tell here, but it looks like just that X is there, but it looks like it's covering up a swastika that was smaller that used to be there. That's what it looks like if you look closely. All right, so that's that. And uh, let me see. So let's go over here. Um, let's see. Can I bring that in? Does this video work? Yeah, I think we've covered most things, most subjects. Uh, probably, let's see, the next uh, video will be analysis of uh, the three guys in their um, uh, their video. And I'm going to go back to uh, Rusty Magnets. So these guys, so you can go to the Rusty Magnets page. I'm gonna go, and then also Bad... And so bad influencer is the guy with the KKK stuff, uh, but influencer. I'm gonna have to type it in my bad influencer. There we go. So bad influencer videos. So that was the one I just showed you. First canal walk on wrong. Um, and if you see like these other things here, it's like police shut us down. Purse found while magnet fishing, safe door found, you know, maybe he's just showing the more titillating titles, but it just seems like they're dealing with it. Like if you look at a lot of these magnet fishing guys, they're dealing with a lot of guns and bombs and stuff. And we don't know that some of these people aren't just putting, you know, mud on a bomb and saying they found it, you know, and, uh, you know, so, you know, magnet fishing seems like to be a legitimate thing, obviously, but. You know, we don't know what these guys have a, have extensive records and we don't know what really was going on in the video. They're even say, seen saying that they didn't have their magnet fishing stuff with them. So why were they there in the first place if they're if they're magnet fishers, but they didn't have their magnet fishing equipment? Right. So, you know, how do we know they're not just, you know, dump guys that were dumping a, a body, you know, in the river and maybe somebody saw them. So then they called the police we don't know that that happened, you know, uh, but, you know, it could have been, obviously it could have been Jason Hunt, you know, uh, and his, you know, friend, Anthony, I mean, Michael Anthony Bridges, who beat up Marcus in the past, you know, uh, or, you know, it could, it could have been anybody, you know, Latricia Hunt's threatened his life, you know, her, the whole family, you know, um, we don't, you know, uh, you know, but we do know that they're, they're gangsters and they're armed, you know, um, Jason Hunt had, you know, like serious dealers in, in Melissa's house before uh, he was, he had drugs uh, flown there and stuff. And she sent in stuff to her house and, and, uh, you know, trying to extort her and scare her, you know, people with duffel bags of, uh, of, of, uh, of weight and stuff like all up in her house and her and you know like locking doors in her house when she wasn't like she came back to her in her house once and you know there's some you know shady guys up in her house with the bathroom door locked you know you know she's got kids that's scary you know so you know all this stuff is is very very scary and you know as you all know ttm academy i've been you know always crusading up uh you know violence in uh in the in our communities and, uh, you know, that's being disseminated and uh, exacerbated through hip hop, uh, you know, hip hop More than is, that, I think, is uh... actually uh, intensifying, uh, you know, crime in black neighborhoods, like especially Atlanta, 
in the center of hip hop is the center of crime now, you know. But uh, you know, you know, was this these KKK people that did it, or you know that ha all these felons that did it, or was it you know, uh, you know, uh, the woman that's the stud and her you know gangster brother that did it, you know, and his homie, you know, um, uh, those are you know it hasn't been investigated so we got to get an investigator we don't know what happened it's clearly foul play he was found in the river with his short and his jacket was on the side of the river torn so somebody you know obviously you know uh seems like there was a robbery that happened and the police aren't investigating it as a robbery or at least say the detectives aren't investigating it as a robbery they're just like oh you know it's a it's it's just we just think it's an accident and you know and then boom you know now captain tabasco's uh uh shannon seymour tabasco got, just got promoted for protecting uh right after her their internal affairs complaint you know all right so now let's like play some of this so let's start out today we're going to go canal walking happened today um, let me first find out what's going on here um actually you know what? i'm gonna put this in another video because you know they could try to um dispute i'm gonna put this in another video and do analysis of that but before that i think i'm just going to um uh, maybe go through some of these files that I have here left. Uh, let's see anything that I want to get in. Um, yeah, so these are all like screenshots that I found to be, you know, kind of alarming. Uh, you know, uh, this right here, this is an important picture. All right, let's look at this. But yeah, you can go to this thing. Uh, you can go to More than that, this I think, video. Uh, special with Rust. It says I think special with hall. Rusty. It's from November twentieth. This was on the day that Marcus was found dead. They went live on YouTube and and you know told what happened from their perspective. You know, but there's there's weird things about their story that just seem kind of weird. All right, and then given all their criminal records, you know, but they say that they found him farther down the river to the left and you, there's this you know big metal bar here that when I went there this is when I took a picture I took this picture there's nothing there you see there should be a metal bar there on the right by that same graffiti piece it's like why would that metal bar not be there months I'm mean, not months like this is just two weeks later it's like you know um but yeah maybe maybe it rolled down but it's probably heavy enough that it's not going to roll you would think it would still be there but uh you know maybe detectives picked it up you know more knows? than that i think uh all right so now let's so yeah um let's go to the next picture all right so we saw that picture um now let's see we saw the picture of his hand yeah now yeah so yeah i'll wrap it up at, at that um and i'm just going to go back to a picture of of uh marcus's uh coat this is marcus's coat torn up you know and then i'm going to show a picture of marcus this is marcus All right. And uh yeah, you know, he was a soldier. And yeah, he was a soldier trained in river combat and uh you know, so we saw that the picture of him in the river and you know that the end is clearly, you know, uh could be foul play. All right. So, um and let's go back to the other news stations so, so we can wrap it up. So, um, right, body, body found in Miami River. So we did Fox. I feel like uh, let's do TMJ. Did we do this one? 
Is there a TMJ news story? There's no TMJ news story. All right, so I'll read that again. The Milwaukee Police Department is investigating the death of a man whose body was found in Menami River on Saturday. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office says it was, it was called to the scene near Valley Park off North 42nd Street before 3 p.m. on Saturday. The identity of the man has not been released. The medical examiner's office says an autopsy is scheduled for Monday. So they're saying that they were called before 3 p.m., but we have that, you know, medical record that shows that, that it got called way earlier. Um, and I'll pull that back up. We can see that was, what time was that? That was, was reported at, was a case initiated at 1.02 p.m. 11.20.21. Yeah, so one one o two p.m. is when it was first initiated. Um, but, uh, you know, the guys were there way earlier. There's, um, there's actually them riding in their car before that, you know, so we don't know, you know, maybe one of their homies got in a fight with the guy and pushed him back and he fell and hit the back of his head and, you know, drowned or something, you know, we don't even know, we don't know what happened, you know, they could have ran up on him, robbed him and uh, knocked him out and somebody saw, so, and so they called the police or something, you know, we don't know, we don't know what happened or maybe one of them called the police on somebody else. Like maybe one of them did it and then the other ones, the other one called the police, but then they all had to make up a story or something or who knows what's going to happen, you know, but, uh, you know, all this stuff needs to be investigated. So, you know, we're going to be, so we're going to be starting a, a GoFundMe if y'all, you know, want to, you know, help and support our family in finding out information about what happened uh via a private investigator you know you know please donate to our gofundme and I'll, I'll put a link below when we get the link all right 